Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use, cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light shine through. If you believe it's true, baby, won't you let the light up YouTube this is Matt from Tech by Matt and today I'm coming at you guys with my ultimate $300 console killing gaming PC now this is in no means uh, an attempt for me to bash consoles it's really just to show that you can get into PC gaming at a very low price point for the same price or even less than a console and you even have all the added functions that a PC brings now I set the budget of this to $300 for a couple of reasons one I wanted it to be below the price of a console because I was going to be using used parts so I'd imagine that getting a used console I did some research and about the cheapest you can get it is around $325 so $300 seemed like a good price point the parts that I chose were a combination of new and used parts mostly used I bought a lot of parts off eBay just because that's accessible to most anyone I didn't want to buy too much stuff off Craigslist I did buy a couple things but I am in Florida I'm not in a super like tech area starting off with the CPU I went with an Intel Core i5-750. This is a first generation i5 processor. It's got four cores and it's got a base clock of 2.66 gigahertz, but I was go able to get a pretty good overclock with it, which I'll discuss in a little bit. I got this CPU for only $35 off eBay. This is a pretty good deal because it gives you pretty good performance, very similar to that of a new overclocked Pentium Anniversary Edition, but it does have quad cores, which is going to help a lot in modern games. The motherboard I went with is the MSI H55P33. I got this for $50 off eBay. It's very, it's a very basic MATX motherboard, but it gets the job done being able to fit our CPU and also has a 16x PCIe lane for our graphics card. Moving on to RAM, I went with six gigs of crucial RAM. It's 1333 megahertz DDR3, and really I skimped a little bit. I could have went for eight gigs and skimped six spent less money in the case which probably would have been better giving you more performance but six gigs is really going to be enough for most modern games and as I could tell it really didn't hold me back at all during my gaming. I got this RAM for $25 on eBay, which in my opinion is a pretty good deal. Moving on to the graphics card, I went with a Sapphire Dual X Radeon HD 7950. Now some of you who are new to PC gaming may not have even ever heard of that card, but really all that a R9 280 is, is a rebadged version of this card. It's got 3 gigs of VRAM and it's very powerful and gave some really good performance in this build. Now I got this card off eBay for $102. And when you think about how much a new R9 280 is, that's a really great deal. Moving on to storage, I wanted to match the 500 gigs of the Xbox One and PS4, so I went with a 500 gig Hitachi Death Star hard drive that I got off of eBay. It's 7200 RPMs and is going to give plenty of storage for a pretty good game collection. Moving on to the cooler, I went with a Cooler Master Hyper TX3. This is a really good cooler. I got it on sale for only $12 on Amazon and it was able to give me an overclock of 3.66 gigahertz, which is really good seeing that the base clock is 2.66 gigahertz. For the power supply, I went with a Raid Max 530 watt semi-modular power supply. Now this power supply was only $23 on Craigslist. I found it from a guy, he was selling it new, and it's semi-modular, which is nice, and it even has a blue LED fan 
It's going to provide plenty of headroom because the system should only use a little over 400 watts. Moving on to the case, I went with the Corsair Obsidian 350D. I got this case for $35 off Craigslist, which is a really great deal seeing that new it retails for $100, and this case was in really good condition. So overall, I ended up spending $303 on this build, so I did go over by $3, but really the performance that I'm able to get out of this does make up for that going over a little bit. Moving on to benchmarks, I benchmarked four games. They're all modern. They're all pretty hard to run, and this computer had no problem running any of them. So as you guys can see, for only around $300, you can get a really impressive and powerful gaming machine that's going to be able to play any modern game at 1080p. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and if you're really awesome, you should go ahead and subscribe. And this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.